Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that question the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism where the prism of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget to the budget, they lose. Some of them sleep. They're going to ask how much you are on. I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia and I am the People's Journalist. My name is Anita Salma Alege, and I'm here on the TOS show today as the interviewer, and I am going to be interviewing our normal host, Osasu Ibinedion. Welcome to the show. The Darling Daughter's message is something that Osasu really embodies. She's a shining example of what it means to be a woman who loves God, is living um, her purpose, and is just doing amazing and awesome things to impact um, this generation. And I feel like we need more of those women to be out there and inspire those you know, coming up behind her to do things a little bit differently than what we've seen growing up. So, Osasu, welcome to your show. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a little bit strange. <laughs> it is a bit strange, but I'm enjoying this. Amazing. <laughs> Good. So, we're going to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Um, and we just want you to, you know, give us your, give us the honest, uncut, don't think about it too much, um, and don't bother being politically correct. The, the Darling Daughters are all about authenticity and vulnerability, and that is, you know, it's welcomed and it's really appreciated. So, so I think my first thing would just, um, would, would be for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your life's purpose. What would you consider your life's purpose? Oh, okay. I love this because it's very elaborate, but I've learned over the years to, you know, summarize <laughs> exactly. it. But, um, I would first of all define myself uh, before anything else as a child of God mm -hmm. because God is at the center of my creation, is at the center of my being, the center of my purpose. Everything I do um, is springing from that you know, divine alignment, that purpose that I believe, you know, God has created me for. Obviously, I am a daughter to two fantastic parents who have raised me, you know, to realize that it's a privilege and an honor to know God. And um, they've also taught me that in this life, anything that you want to achieve, you can, as long as you're willing to work for it. And as long as you back that hard work with prayers. Um, I'm a sister to four amazing siblings, um, an auntie to five little munchkins, um, the chief executive officer of TOS TV Network, a digital first Pan-African news network, executive director of the Osasu Show Foundation, which focuses on empowering women and children, uh, children with startups uh, with education, scholarships, and women with startup capital to begin small to medium mm -hmm. scale enterprises. Um, I'm a chief, <laughs> um, uh, Neo Dumwan of oh, Isiala Uku Umbato, yes. autonomous community <laughs> in Obengwa local government area of Abia State. They gave me this chief gentleman title because of the work the foundation does there as well. So um, that's it for the titles, but um, yeah, I'm just, um, I believe my purpose in life truly is to 
help the less privileged. Mm -hmm. So I've always felt that way since I was very little. I always felt that I needed to give back. My mm -hmm. purpose is ordained. It's tied to giving back. It's tied to doing something to amplify the voices of those who don't have a voice, to better the situation of mm -hmm. those who are, you know, impoverished. And I asked myself when I was trying to decide my career path, I was like, okay, um, I need to make money in order to give money, correct? Yes. So I need to be able to, you know, define a career that I would enjoy, but uh, would also be profitable, but most importantly, impactful. So when I came back to Nigeria, I was doing television advertising, mm -hmm. I was making, you know, enough money. And um, I was also doing my charity work on the side. So I was taking a percentage of the money I was making. We built shack houses for the internally displaced mm -hmm. persons in uh, IDP camp area one. We built a makeshift school for them. And we we're doing a lot of charity work. And I said to myself, I was like, how can I bridge the gap between the clients I'm helping create television advertising for and those people who are perpetually impoverished due to their lack of people-friendly policies mm -hmm. because most of the clients were government officials. And that. that's how the Osasu show came about. So we began the show where we take words directly from the mouths of everyday Nigerians to the ears of their leaders and vice versa mm -hmm. to ensure that we live in a more equitable society. Then a couple of years into the program, um, someone came to my office and said, is the Osasu show profitable? And I said, really? Well, not really, because the mm -hmm. advertising had scaled back. And I was like, right now, we're actually still using our advertising funds to sustain. And he said, I want to tell you something. Your business doesn't make you money. Your brand does. Your business builds you a brand. Mm -hmm. And from that brand, you make up money. Mm -hmm. You make some money. And I said, oh, aha. So the Osasu Show has given me a platform to create a brand for myself. Mm -hmm. And through that brand, I'm now able to do many other things. I'm into downstream oil and gas. I'm into Steve Doring. I have a television network mm -hmm. now. And at that time in 2016, when I had this conversation, I started doing documentaries, mm -hmm. you know, commissioned by the private and public sector. So we can go in. So aside to the Osasu Show, we can go in and create other media material and assets for you that was generating revenue to our company so that's how we've just been able to you know expand you know our, our portfolio diversify our streams of income and also still remain focused on the divine purpose which is to help mm -hmm. and to give back to society but not in a charitable way but in a more sustainable and systemic way um, where we go in and fix the system right because you can just treat the surface wound exactly. but if you don't get to the root cause that can keep on reoccurring so what we do is have these conversations with government officials and hold them to account during the NSAS protest we were at the very f forefront of uh, the conversations you know we spoke with very high level people in government and told them these demands need to be acceded to mm -hmm. it's not a matter of you know oh We'll give them a couple of days and it's going to die out. No, you must succeed to the five demands that are made and Precisely. action needs to be taken. So um, we continue to work in our purpose or I continue to work in my purpose. And thankfully, I have a team of dedicated, hardworking young people behind me who are also, you know, very much aligned and in tune with the vision that God has put me on this earth to accomplish. Would you say that you've had to go on a journey to discover who you are in Christ? I know that you mentioned there were, you know, there were key turning points where you went from doing a specific thing and then having a conversation that kind of moved you in a different direction. Are there any other highlights like that on your journey to figuring out who you are supposed to be and who you are supposed to impact and why you're here? Most definitely. For me, it's a continuous journey. Mm -hmm. um, I say to people all the time that my greatest blessing, my greatest gift in life is the fact that I've always known what my purpose was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what vehicle God wanted me to use to achieve the purpose, which I believe would constantly change, by mm -hmm. the way. But I've always known that my purpose was to help. Mm -hmm. Like the intrinsic gratification I feel when I see I'm able to help somebody, mm -hmm. that nothing else gives me more pleasure. Yes. Do you understand? So I know, I've known since I was a baby that this is it. Mm -hmm. This is the reason I've been created. However, I've also known that just handouts wouldn't cut it. Mm -hmm. I need to always be in a position where it's, I'm sending you to school because I know the ripple effect that would have not just on you, 
but in your generation to and come. And your community. And your community, you know, and the nation at large, you know. So um, we always look for, and I say we because it's not just me, it's my foundation. It's those people who pledge the foundation. Mm -hmm. It's those people who believe in the vision. So we always look for ways that we're not just, it's not just tokenism, you know. How can we change the system so that we can shed some of our privilege so mm -hmm. other people can have more privilege? So the journey to... Um, discovering the vehicle in which I can achieve my purpose yes. was a struggle because even after graduating university my parents said to me you must do your master's af you know right immediately after. after before you come to Nigeria and I said why I really don't know what I want to do yet and they said you throw a stone up in Nigeria and then, you know the stone will land on somebody who has their master's degree everyone has their master's degree it's true, though. so you can't come back without <laughs> your master's degree and I said, you know what, let's make a deal. I'm going to work for some time in America before I get my master's degree and before I come back. And they're like, oh, stubborn child, okay. <laughs> so I did uh, do an internship during my last year of college at MGM in Beverly Hills, California. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I got my master's. And after my master's, I went to film school to do a short course in TV and film producing. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure of the vehicle I was going to use to achieve this mm -hmm. purpose. As I said, when I came back due to my um, uh, certificate in TV and film producing, I was doing television adverts, you know, and you know, I was generating some revenue for mm -hmm. that so I could pursue my purpose. But now it became a show. Now it's now a television network. Who knows what's going to be tomorrow? So I feel like the vehicle in which you can use to achieve your God-given purpose mm -hmm. would always change, would always, you know, um, evolve into something bigger and mm -hmm. better and more impactful where you can, you know, reach more people. However, your purpose will always remain the same yes. because it's given to you by God. Thank you. I really love that answer. And I like how you, um, you pointed out that people don't need to be so stuck on the vehicle because it's constantly changing. Mm. Start with what you have right now. Mm. Um, figure out what that one thing is mm. and don't worry about how it, you know, morphs as your life exactly. you know changes and, and exactly. you know just and the different stages it. of your life Embrace exactly change so right now you're doing this you know um first of all i actually have to commend you Thank this you. is so bold of you to like <laughs> sit in front of the camera and you know ask these Thank questions you. and you know take this bold step of faith Thank you know you. towards achieving your purpose so this is a prime example of what i'm talking about the fact that the vehicle in mm -hmm. which you can use to achieve your purpose may defer it may defer all it may defer at the same time it may defer at different stages in your life but always embrace that change mm -hmm. embrace that difference just always ensure that it's in line with the end goal which is the purpose god has for precisely you. Um, why do you choose to identify yourself as a Christian um, when it can sometimes be unpopular, especially in the media space? Because I have no choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's this song that goes, I'm a prisoner for Christ. Mm. So without God, I'm nothing. There's no sasume. There's no there's no drive mm. you know there's nothing what wakes me up in the morning what makes me want to you know do good what makes me want to hustle it's my god-giving purpose mm -hmm. so a christian is who i am you know and i care less about the tag but i care more about my relationship with god that personal relationship mm -hmm. with god the reason i call myself a christian I, and i identify as one is because he's giving us a set of rules to live by to mm -hmm. abide by and those people who believe in his son jesus christ those people who abide by those rules mm -hmm. are christians yes. so i identify as that but most importantly what matters to me is that personal relationship with him you know being able to call him my father being able to call him my love being able to call him my god call him everything you know so it's I don't even have a choice to say, oh, no, like, God, okay, oh, our relationship, you know, bye. No, because there literally isn't any me mm. without him. Yes. And not just literally, but also, you know, figuratively. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't find a need to live, to exist anymore without my relationship with God. Because what drives me, what gives me hope? Can you imagine a hopeless life, <laughs> a life without any hope, a life without any excitement, a life without yeah. anything to look forward to? That is exactly what life would be without, you know, my relationship with God, without my Christian faith. So um, it, it just isn't a choice. But however, I remember when um, I had just moved to the States, I questioned my faith. Mm. You know, I questioned, is this real? Is God real? 
you know, um, why do I believe what I believe in? And I was so happy that at that young age, I was able to question that. And I had the right set of people around me to guide me. And I remember it was my mother, phenomenal woman, um, that I had asked about this. And she said, okay, let's look at our life trajectory, our family. So do you remember when God did X, Y, Z for mm. us? Do you remember when X, Y, Z was sick? And the doctor said this, and all of a sudden that sickness disappeared. Mm. Do you remember that situation? Then she starts to recall receipts. to my memory. She provided the receipts, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so she started to call these things, and I'm like, oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, God has been with us throughout. So, all along. Yeah, all along. And then I started to build my own personal relationship with him, and I would call on him, and he would answer. You know, I would pray about something so little and it's done or something so big and massive and it's done and you know the challenges I've had in life and even when he didn't answer me I would look back to more and say thank you God for not answering that yes. prayer <laughs> yes thank you for saying no thank you for making me wait thank you so much for having me in mind this whole time mm -hmm. because as you have said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 I know the ha the plans I have yes. for you my darling daughter Precisely. Uh, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So every single day I'm rest assured that my future is secure in the hands of God. Therefore I have no other choice to look around or to experiment or to have the audacity to say I don't want a relationship with him or I don't want mm -hmm. to be a Christian because he is my everything, you know. No, I can 100% relate to that. I think, you know, I meet people who they found this way, I don't know how they do it, to have this, you know, public-private divide where only the people who know them personally know of their relationship with God, but the people who, you know, see them in other lights, maybe work or in business, they, it's just something completely different. And so maybe there's a reason why they've chosen to do that, but I think it's so amazing that you've said for you there's no... You can't really take one from the other. They're, yeah, yeah. they're caught up in each other. Yeah. What is one thing that you wish they knew that would help them have peace mm. about their singleness? Go from that place of, you know, worrying about it um, to just being like, okay, this is a season. Mm. It will come to an end. But how can I love it and enjoy it right where I am? Mm. Um, I'm so happy you said to speak from my personal mm. experience because I remember when I moved back to Nigeria I think I was 21 or 20 yeah mm -hmm. 21 and um, I was speaking with this family pastor and she was like oh now that you have moved back so we now need to start praying for a husband I'm like auntie pastor I'm so sorry calm down I'm just 21 what are you talking about and she was like no now is the time to start praying God will do it now do it soon oh my goodness and that sort of I didn't know what it did to my psyche because mm. I started to think that I needed to now make marriage a priority mm. instead of making work. And thankfully, I've always been hardworking and mm -hmm. very career-oriented. So that didn't derail me from mm -hmm. pursuing a career. Just that I started to have in mind at all times I had to pursue both simultaneously. Mm. When in reality, looking in retro retrospect, I could have just focused on my career instead of looking to focus on a relationship. Mm -hmm. Because what on God's green earth is a 21 year old woman mm -hmm. looking or man looking to do in marriage you know it's absolutely ridiculous I don't it doesn't make any sense to me anyways but um so looking in retrospect I wouldn't have let that pressure get to me at mm -hmm. that stage um I should have just focused 100 percent on building a career for myself so for the single women watching and wondering how is Osasu doing it mm -hmm. you know this is a young woman you know so accomplished by the grace of God yeah. and still has so much more to do and every single day she's doing it back to back and doing what she needs to do. I would say just focus on the time, mm -hmm. live in the moment. Do not let anything distract you. Mm -hmm. Your divine life partner would come when God says it's time. Yes. There is nothing you can do to hurry up the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Do not be deceived. Do not mm -hmm. let any pastor deceive you. You can be the most hardworking. You can be the most beautiful. Yes. You can do whatever you need to do in your own capacity. But if God says it's not time, then he wouldn't give it to you, especially if he loves you. And we all know that God loves us very much. One thing that I've realized, even just, you know, I, I studied children's rights and just we, we study the brain of, you know, how your brain develops from stage to stage. 
And what nobody tells you is that your decision-making um, faculties, your frontal cortex, develops fully at mm. 25. Mm. And so there's this amazing um, counseling psychologist called Benjamin Zulu, and he says, for him, he says, don't even date till you're 25, because mm. if you're making a lifelong decision and your brain hasn't fully developed, are you sure you want to stick with that for the rest mm -hmm. of your life? And I studied that in children's rights, and then I heard him say that in the context of relationships, and I was like, why does no one else think about this? Why don't we talk about this more what? often? Uh -huh. Because I was like, okay, we, we, we studied that in, in mm. regards to like the juvenile mind and saying that before they're 25, if they, if they commit a crime or something mm. like that, then you have to take into account the fact that their brain hasn't fully they're developed in making yeah. decisions. Mm. So they get lesser you know, sentences. But mm. when he said that in regards to relationships, I was like, I had a eureka moment and I was like, what? Mm -hmm. How does no one talk about this exactly. and so i love that you said that you know at 21 I, and i do know that there are people who are called to early marriage i know quite a few of them but i think that they're the exception they're not the rule mm. and so when people see that happening maybe you have a sister who's gotten married at 21 or even 19 and you're like oh that has to be my story i think you need to understand that most of those times that story is extremely unique and you don't have to follow that pattern uh, my last question is this um what keeps you bold daring and audacious in pursuing excellence. I mean, the excellence is all around me. I don't, no one has to tell me that you do things with the spirit of excellence, but what keeps you bold in doing that when many women tend to dim their light, you know, for fear of being seen as overly self-sufficient to men? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're like, if I do too much, I might scare off um, the right man from pursuing me. What, what, you don't think like that very mm -hmm. clearly. So what keeps you doing what you're doing with so much confidence? Mm, I think it's an innate characteristic. Mm. Um, when I was younger, they called me stubborn a lot because I would question everything. You want me to do A? I need you to explain to me why I need to do A. <laughs> I was also very inquisitive. I asked a lot of questions and that was um, very unusual for a girl child. Um, so I think it's an innate characteristic, mm. uh, characteristic, characteristic. I was born like that. However, um, growing up, as we said earlier, due to the pressure, societal pressure, you know, I sort of tried to shy away and play mm. down for a very short time. And I said, okay, maybe if I could just be a little less, mm. you know, a little less of me, a little less daring, mm. a little less audacious, mm. a little less bold, a little less smart even, oh, wow. you know, I could attract, you know, this person that everyone is saying, oh, you need to be with this person now. Mm. And God said, no. <laughs> I created... Simple and short. No, simple and short. Like, my daughter, that is not for you. I created you to be all that you are yes. for a purpose. No one else can achieve that purpose that I've asked you to create. Mm -hmm. So every single characteristic of yours, the stubbornness, mm -hmm. the intelligence, the hard work the ethic that you use to pursue that which you want, everything comes together. The style. She the will style. say, but I'll say it for her. <laughs> it all works together for my good, for the purpose in which I've created you to achieve. So when you're outspoken, when you're inquisitive, when you're willing to question the status quo, when you're bold, when you're daring, when you say no to certain things, it's because God has created you that way to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. when you're able to challenge, when you're able to do things that, you know, typically is unseen and unheard of a woman doing is because God has created me to do that. Yes. And I do not even have the option to shy away because as I said, I tried to a certain time when I was trying to conform a little, maybe that would make me more. And God said, no, you know, you're created this way for a reason. Yes. I was having a conversation with someone in my office two days ago. And he was saying, do you know you'll be very intimidating to most people, you know, because, you know, what else are they bringing to the table? And I said, the man that's intimidated by me is exactly the man that I do not wish to attract. Yes. One last and thing I that I would just like to say is, can you give me one word that could encompass your singleness? One word. Peace. Oh. <laughs> North to South Africa. East to West Africa T 
TOS TV Network is your digital first Pan African news network, bringing you news from across the continent. Visit our website www.tostvnetwork.com and follow us on social media at TOS TV Network on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.